Hello people, I'm Otton and this is the character design process of Romualdo Manavia, one of my fellow teammates, as I can say. The first thing I did was experimenting with poses and silhouettes, trying to figure out what I like more and what I like less. In this case, my Instagram followers helped me uh, trimming down these poses and eventually we like this fall. Here I'm adding some rough details and cleaning up the lines. This helps me to visualize the final design and choose the actual pose. When choosing a pose I try to keep in mind two things. The pose itself has to convey the most visible aspects of the characters and the silhouette has to be readable. Uh, to do so you can fill out the outer shape and see if you can still read what's going on. Regarding Romualdo is friendly, curious and eager to explore, so this is the pose I went for. At this point I already drew the other four team members, so in order to keep all the characters consistent I went for a similar reference pool. The outfit style is mostly inspired by 1930s clothing, uh, such as explorers, archaeologists, fishermen and even barbers ended up on my Pinterest boards. For Romualdo I was also inspired by aviators, and you can see it in the googles and the pens. One of the recurring elements I wanted to keep was the boots and all the characters of the team have the same type of boots, all but one actually. Once I was satisfied with the sketch, I started drawing the final line art. And this process will take a little while, so I'll talk more about who Romualdo is and what he does. This character was created inside a tabletop roleplay campaign while testing out a game I'm writing. Um, the game is masterless and co-creative, focusing on exploration of both marine environments and the characters themselves. The game wants us to create the whole setting, and in this case we define one very important element, uh, out of the many, um, which is the toxic sun. Several years ago something caused the sun to become unstable, and the planet to stop rotating. We call this event the Abaddon. Most of humanity was wiped out and the world became an unhospital endless sea. Sunlight exposure causes wild mutations in a matter of hours and even though we managed to live in the shadow about 95% of the population has some sort of mutation. Romualdo is part of that 5% and they are called the Unscorched. Romualdo is the guide of the team and is in charge of taking us where we have to go and back to our homes. He's an optimistic, likeable and grounded person, but he also has some gambling problems. Malavia, his family, is known for the exploration achievements its member managed to reach. Basically, he has a lot of expectations on his shoulders and we are not really sure he meet those. In the comment section of my last video I got asked how do I choose my palette and this is not a trivial question. First, I want to say that I'm not a professional artist, so I link down in the description some tutorials from amazing artists that I found useful for understanding values and basic color theory. I approach the coloring process starting from defining what's the color of the ambient lighting. Uh, if you have a flat background color, you can just use that one. 
In this case it's a very light blue. Then I choose my colors trying to go not that far from the lighting. For example, if I want a green I can slide very close to it, but not quite. If I want a red I can slide towards the red, ending in a slightly desaturated purplish. Keep in mind that the opposite color will be very desaturated. This means that a grey in this illustration will result in an orange-like tone. For instance, in the shirt is almost grey. A little tip that I found out to be quite helpful for checking the values is to view the color illustration in grayscale. This way you can check contrast and values more clearly. Another thing you can try is to add some subtle variety in the flats. Here I added some red to the nose and cheeks, some texture in the pants and belts, and a darker tone on the jaw for the on the jaw area for the regrowing beard. After I laid down all the flats, I proceed in adding uh, the overall shadows. Um, this is just a clipped overlay layer filled with a very dark brown. Why brown, you ask? Because it's the opposite of blue. Um, then I just delete the lighter parts, trying to sculpt the shapes on the body, lighting up the most exposed part of the body. In order to create more depth, I usually add a total of 3 to 4 main shadow and light layers. One for the darkest, one for the highlights, and one or two for the mid-tones. I tend to add some more contrast in the parts I want to pop out. In this case I want the focus on the face and the lamp area. The lamp will be another light source and it contains a mysterious bioluminescence lizard-like creature. And for this one I took inspiration from Axolotl, because they are just cute. We still don't really know anything about it yet, but uh, we know that it just emits a cold and dim light. When I'm done with lightning, I had some final touches like smoke, additional lighting and some other colors here and there. At this point I realized that I didn't like the eyes, so I had to overpaint them and make them feel right. This is the final result. I'm happy, the character's player is also happy, so I think we can call this a success. If you like this video drop a like, if you want more content you can either subscribe or follow me on other social media, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitch and Twitter. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time, bye!